think uh, the pandemic demonstrated one thing. Yes. You know, schools who are good at teaching and meeting the goals and convincing the parents that they're doing well, they have stayed and they have come back full force. Schools that they were just doing monotonous job definitely are dying down. I think that is where the care needs to be taken because India, having said the K-12 population is 270 million, you know, they, we need so many good schools to cater to that kind of uh, numbers. So few good schools will not be good enough. And the pandemic time also has shown us that just pure academics is not good enough. Student well-being is the most important thing. And when the kids came back, uh, we run about 725 schools across country. So when the kids came back, it was so difficult to keep them in their chairs for six hours a day. Because they were moving around in the house and, you know, no one knew what they were doing the whole time. So, you know, just to increase that focus, that mentoring, the well-being, mindfulness, you know, all of that. I think it, is, it has become an integral part of learning now. I think in our schools and I'm sure most other schools also have realized that. I think the teachers struggle the most. Uh, students, kids get onto technology quite easily. But traditional teachers who've been teaching the same way for like tens of years, for them to suddenly understand technology and be impactful on a screen is not easy. And our teachers have struggled. The first three months, our teachers have really struggled. And we have the better a lot of teachers compared to anyone else in the country because we do frequent monthly trainings, bi-monthly trainings. So, but they have caught up. They have caught up with it. And, you know, to what Sumit had mentioned, there's both a positive and negative to it. I think our parents realize the amount of follow-up we do, the amount of information we give the students as well because they were part of those classes. And we had so many... Uh, video sessions with parents during this time to keep them motivated, to keep the students motivated during this time because now we were mentors if they are in the classroom but then parent is a parent and also a mentor during that period because they have to take care and they have to push the students to wake up on certain time, attend classes, work and do that. But the one learning, I think one important learning that made us start an edtech company is uh, you know, purely online will not suit most students in India. Given the kind of students we have, given the kind of parents we have, the hand-holding level from childhood is very, very high in India. You know, in, you can find only 5% of students who are extremely motivated to do on their own without no one checking on them. Unfortunately, that's the fact, either we agree or not. So for those set of students, they have to be in the classroom. Otherwise, they are losing their potential. They do not have the opportunity to keep pushing themselves if they don't find a competitive environment around them and competitive people around them to keep motivating them in a certain way based on the mentality or psychology of the student. So during that time, we have seen a huge loss in learning. I think every student was behind by a year because of lack of work, not lack of teaching. It lack of work on their behalf, on their part, which the parent also was not able to motivate at one point of time. Parents and kids were fighting at home because parents would say, you go study, you know, children would stay, you get annoyed with it. So it's not easy. Whereas when a teacher motivates, a student is willing to listen out of respect and, you know, uh, they probably understand them better in that sense. But when at home, a kid gets annoyed, especially a teenage kid. We use technology mainly for areas where it would benefit the student. Like in biology, showing a 3D diagram where a student can immediately understand how a leaf is or how, what a heart is and how it functions, right? So it's all need-based. It should be need-based. It's not something that can be done for every single subject, every single topic, for every single grade. If the teacher uses it as need-based, he takes more interest in putting it together. Because most good teachers don't like being given some content and say, you teach in this order, line to line, this is the notes given to you. We have tried that. But none of the teachers were impactful in that manner. But teachers who prepared the content on their own, at least part of the content, were very successful in the classroom. And one other learning from the pandemic is that keep the class lively, as engaging, as lively, as interactive as possible. It's just because it's a captive audience, it means you can just talk and talk and they'll listen and listen. You know, the learning is not going to happen, right? So using technology in that way is, I think, very impactful. And the second part is assessment. You know, we prepare most students, most of our students are prepared for test prep. Assessment is the core. And Indian mentality is built in such a way, has developed in such a way, if you change the assessment in a particular way, the learning changes in that way, 
right? If we make our assessments more concept-oriented, fundamental-oriented, think thinking-oriented, student, teachers, everyone will mould to that and they will start thinking in that same manner. So based on that assessment, that adaptive learning and also the correction of whatever mistakes the students have done is a great feature we have in Infinity Learn now, which we are using for Sri Chaitanya students as well. So the classroom and the assessment, I think, are the greatest strengths that technology can bring because a lot of reports, a lot of data can be generated, which is instantly available to the student and the teacher. So coming to teaching, I think teachers and doctors are an entirely separate category because they have to be trusted and they have to treat students or patients, you know, with that. Uh, there's a human element to it, right? You know, any teacher should have the passion to deal with so many kids, otherwise it's impossible. If you can't deal with kids, it's just very annoying day after day. I don't think they can do their job. So they should have that passion to begin with. And I, I really feel that the dry period is over for teaching community because 15, 16 years ago when I moved back to India, they were all old teachers. There were hardly any new breed of excellent faculty coming into teaching for K-12, especially for test prep. But in the past seven, eight years, due to the increase in pay scales in teaching communities and you know, a lot of interest has developed. Um, and we see a lot of teachers coming from IITs, NITs, coming into teaching maths, physics, chemistry, biology. I mean, it's wonderful to see that change. I think that will keep on happening. So the initial motivation for people to take on to teaching, I think is very important to increase the pool, the teaching talent and then motivating them and uh, training them in a proper way. If we can provide online training certifications, I am sure that will help encourage more brilliant minds who are in other fields also move to teaching eventually. I think that is a basic, uh, first you need to have the proper talent to even train them and introduce them into the classroom. I disagree with that because yeah. we haven't experienced that side. You know, we have always been fortunate with huge trust from the parent community. And throughout the pandemic, we kept re receiving numerous requests to open schools even before the government gave the uh, circular. So we haven't experienced the trust factors. Because, it, of course, we can also do better based on competition. But I guess the parents, uh, for the parents, we are the best they had, you know, given the other circumstances and everything else. But I don't think trust is entirely lacking in private schools. We cannot generalize it. Um, most private schools are doing well. So I think in probably areas where student well-being, I have seen areas, even because we run 725 branches, every branch won't be perfect, frankly, right? Yeah. And where uh, the system becomes the center and not the student, that is where the problem comes. It's always student-centric. We are dealing with education where every single individual is as important as the other. And we need to deal with every student individually and come up with a mechanism to do so. So we have an adoption process where every member in the school adopts five children. And they take care of the well-being of the child throughout their journey. So they know exactly what that student needs. So wherever things like that are not implemented, the student feels he's not heard. The parent feels they are not being heard. They don't get immediate solutions for the problems they ask. That is where this problem comes up. It's not because of lack of intent, I think. It's because lack of a system to do that kind of process.